my kind of desire support. What do we got here? Looks like it's an Odroid. Do it yourself. The most requested video you guys have been waiting for on the channel. Computers. Gaming. Retro gear. Devices. Go ahead and open this bad boy comes with a piece of paper basically just kind of a spec sheet it looks like cool Ooh, power adapter yeah I had to order this from Korea from their official website because Amazon people like to overprice things power oh that's a long cord Let's see what else do we got in this mystical box oh, part of the case what was weird is you had to order the case in two different parts Okay, I like that. Transparent a little bit. Only thing I, oh, that was just about to say, I don't know if there's any screws with this. And then there's some screws. Wow, look at those memory cards. Comes with an adapter too. What is it called? I've never used these kind of memory cards before. It is an EMMC card. Be interesting, I've never used it before. Came with the micro SD adapter in there. And here is the main event. Here's our board. Oh my god, this thing is cute. Ethernet. I think that's a, just a regular USB. The power. HDMI. Some I.O. ports here. Ooh, two USB 3s. Now that's not much. So what I got here is a little four port hub. Screw it, we'll open it the end right way. Yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, she's cute. I like it. Now this product was suggested by a viewer in my Discord. It is a professional gaming keyboard. The JAR OWLJ1. I think it's, he said it has blue switches in it. And it was only like 50 bucks, so it's going to be perfect for this little project. Let's go ahead and check it out. Ooh, comes with spare switches. Neat. Hmm. Well. Not a fan of the background color. Here's the cord. Looks like it's got a pretty good length to it. See how she sounds? Oh yeah. Love the blues. And last but not least, because of how this system is going to be used, I've got an HDMI to VGA adapter here. Well, not too much complicated there. That's all you need, right? My goodness, this is teeny. Let's try to get her in this case. Oh cool, just snapshot. Guessing that's power? I'm not sure yet. Ta-da! Okay, small problem. Put memory card in before you put it in the case. Because you can only get access to the SD slot. But here we are. Let's go ahead and power her on. This is our makeshift uh, setup for now. Got it set up. Got the keyboard hooked up. Got a mouse hooked up. And I'm very surprised. I'm very happy to see that it's booting up onto an, such an old screen because the person who's going to be testing this computer as a daily computer has this kind of monitor. Very happy to see that it did work with that adapter. I was kind of skeptical at first, but I'm very, very surprised. And also I'm surprised that Ubuntu Mate is uh, pre-imaged on that memory card. Was not expecting that. I was expecting Unity. Can you hear that? That's the fan of this thing spinning up. Okay, looks like the default password is Odroid. Boy, that little fan screams though. Get to a terminal. I just want to see the system monitor real quick. Okay, so it has eight cores. Neat. That's what I wanted. I was hoping that it did. Wasn't sure if I got the eight core version or not. Two gigs of memory. It looks like 1.1, yeah. Disconnected, you are now offline. I need to see what the MAC address is so I can have the firewall give it access. Come on, get an IP address, you damn bastard. We'll try to reboot it and see now if it can get an IP address from the network because it should be able to connect now. Just wants to be a pain in my butt. Not getting networking. Let me investigate this. I can be a real dummy. I plugged the ethernet into the wrong port on the switch. Good job. Okay, first things first, we've got to update it. I wonder what version of Ubuntu this is. Oh wow, it's actually Ubuntu 16.4. Cool, we're off to a good start here. 
Well, it's doing that. I'm going to fire up Firefox. The big test is how well will it handle YouTube. Let's go ahead and check out Anthrid, huh? Sushi Tech. Full screen it. Ooh, what's going on? Okay. Let's pump this sucker up to 1080p. Okay, we're going to pump this up to 1080p. Ouch, ouch, ouch. We're going to have to fix this. Wow, that's that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Get me out of here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's locking up. Come on, go down to 240p. Whew, might be able to save it here. It's playable. We're playing off of YouTube Raw. Definitely probably going to have to do some tweaking there. Administrative directory. That's another process using it. Sweet. Got it to update. Turns out the problem was, I don't know, but I had to run this command here to remove the lib apt list lock. And entering that command, everything uh, unlocked and now it's updating. Don't know what his problem was, but it's doing a lot of updates. It's got a lot to do here. And our next mission is to figure out what we can do to make YouTube play smoothly. We'll see where this goes. I think I've made some progress here. What I've done, I have installed Compass, and it has definitely helped with the lag issue in moving windows, but see, it's still kinda, kinda chunky here. However, though, YouTube here, running this video at HD, running good in the player. We'll full screen it now. Still, the video is smooth. Not too bad, not too bad. This is definitely an improvement from where I was. And that's not the only cool thing going on at the moment. And over here, I'm running XFCE on X2Go to the Odroid. So I'm running two different desktop environments at the same time here. I'm running XFCE over here using X2Go on Windows 10. And over there, it is running Ubuntu, the Mate desktop. As you can see, HTOP that's running here with two desktop environments running at the same time, it's doing very well. Let's try running a YouTube video on here. Over an X2Go session, yeah, YouTube's a little laggy. What the heck is going on here in this video? Sasquatch is coming after her. Full screen over an X2Go session. This is probably going to be crap. Yep, that's crap. I actually might use this as an X2Go server. So this is interesting. I just kind of wanted to show you this. I think there's something weird with how the video acceleration works on the desktop. Reason why I say that is because, well, watch this when I move this window here. As you can see, it's very screen teary. It's not smooth. It's jumpy. Oh, man, it's really weird. Believe it or not, the Raspberry Pi 2, when I did that workstation video, was a lot smoother than this. Much better performance. However, over on the uh, X2Go session of the using the Odroid, check this out. Now I move the window, buttery, smooth, and natural. Believe it or not, it's performing better using X2Go than it is on the device itself, which is kind of giving me an idea of what I might actually do with this Odroid. Yeah, I've been wanting to make a dedicated X2Go server in the rack. This might fit the bill. Oh, and just for fun, check this out. I was doing some research between Arch and Ubuntu Mate on this thing, and somehow I ran into somebody who said the YouTuber user named Anthrit who <laughs> put Arch Mate on his Raspberry Pi. That was back in 2015. Kind of a neat little find. Doing research and I run into my own name. I'm going to quickly log out of this session here, and I just want to show you something that was kind of neat. Accidental discovery when I was toying around here. If we change this session to Cody, Cody, however, runs real smooth on this. If I go to add-ons, I wanted to use this for YouTube, but I go to YouTube and let's just try, try a video here on here. Okay, what the hell is this? Anthrit fan, 18 seconds. I know this one's in HD. Let's go ahead and try it on this one. This one's actually 4K, so this would be a good test. Cody plays video very well, very smooth compared to the desktop environment, so Cody is definitely due using some type of uh, acceleration here. I wonder why I can't get that in the desktop environment. Just for, uh, you know, shits and giggles, I've loaded Ubuntu Mate on a Raspberry Pi 2. What's interesting is the performance is better than the Odroid. Look at that. The window moves really smoothly. Firefox scrolls really smoothly. 
videos play. Definitely not full screen, but they do play smoothly. Well, yeah. So there we go. Food for thought there. I'm definitely doing something wrong on the Odroid side. I think what I'm gonna do is reflash the card and start over. I've got to figure this out because there's no way something with more RAM, with more CPU power, and of course, you know, just better in general, be slower than a Raspberry Pi 2. At first, I thought my issue was this adapter here, taking the HDMI to VGA, but after running it here on a Raspberry Pi 2, definitely that is not the issue. Plus it ran fine in Cody. Frustrated. Yep, there is definitely an issue with the GPU on this thing. I don't know if it's faulty. I've reinstalled everything, tried different things, Googled for two days now trying to get this situation solved. But unfortunately, using the XU4 as a full-time desktop computer, not going to work until this issue gets resolved somehow. Maybe somebody out there can help me, send me some links. I would really, really like to know. I am stumped on this one, especially when a Raspberry Pi 2 can do this better. Wow. But otherwise, programs, everything else, performance-wise, is pretty good. I'm going to re-button this project up, and this bad boy is going to go back in the case and is going to go in the server rack and become an x to go server because it does that very, very well. Let's go ahead and get this in the server rack and give it a purpose. There she be, in the server rack. I put her in there in such a way that the USB 3.0 ports are facing the front here. So if I need to add hard drives or a flash drive or whatever to it, I can go ahead and do that. So now it is a part of the server rack family. Well, here we go. Finally got my x to go server. I've been wanting to have an x to go server in my rack for a long time. I originally was going to use the Pine64, but we're going to save that one for another day. I actually have a great idea of what I want to do with that Pine64, especially now that there's a new member of the family. Huh. Wonder where this little guy came from. I am loving this. This is going to be great. Mm-hmm. X to go. I will be using this for the podcast to have, you know, for when I screen share the web pages. It's a little laggy, but it's going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy it. And hopefully over time, performance will, will be improved with the Odroid. Um, I'm really hoping that someday someone comes out, writes a good graphics driver for it, like with the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. Unfortunately, at this time, in this stage and age, age and stage, age and whatever, it cannot be used as a full desktop computer. But it makes one of the best servers I've ever had in the rack. And who knows what I'm going to add to it or do to it in the future. With that, I'm going to end this experiment. This has been Anthony from Anthware, and from this time and every time on, folks, keep on clicking. This is Anthony from Anthware, signing off.